Hello YouTube folks. I figure it's about time that I contribute to uh, some of the research going on around these ultra capacitors. Uh, I have been looking at Laser Hacker's uh, process and uh, he's, his is the only name I remember. There are probably a dozen other people and videos that I have to give credit to for inspiring this um, activity to include conversations at, at auto shops. Uh, we own a Dodge Diesel that we've converted to run on waste vegetable oil and as many of you probably know who own diesel vehicles in cold climates, we're in Colorado, they can be a, a bugger to start. So we're going to try to wire this power pack in parallel with our with one battery in the machine and then be able to remove it once we get to our remote plot in southern Colorado so it's important to us to be able to uh, start the vehicle under extreme conditions and then also the availability of a, a pretty useful power source right now we have lead acid batteries at our place um, and being able to connect this to the solar panel would be of great advantage. So, real quick look at the setup we've got here. The diagram for this particular control setup is on the eBay site that I ordered this set from. And I'll show you the box here that it came in. They're super efficient in terms of sending. This came from uh, Massachusetts. Or MA, I'm not even sure what that is. I think that's Massachusetts. Not terribly important. But uh, this is what came. Seven, what looked to be used uh, ultra capacitors. I'm not totally excited about that, but I understand based on the $178 I spent with shipping that that's uh, probably fair given the stuff that's mounted on the side here. It came with all the, the bolts and, and, um, this equalizing circuit that I haven't seen function yet. Uh, I did some messing around yesterday, of course, with safety glasses on, trying to charge and discharge first with this battery here. You can see a 12 volt, 7.5 amp hour lead acid. And then with some real quick head calculations and uh, help with someone at a local electronics store tried to use this 2 ohm resistor um, on the positive terminal going to the positive terminal of the capacitor bank here and it would work for a while my concern was that as the ultra capacitors behave as a short circuit that I'd do damage to this battery which kind of simulates the other battery in our truck trying to get this guy up to a standard charge voltage of about 14 or 15 volts um, so I got it to about one volt um, and tried some kind of induction coil here that was totally worthless. Um, the best option right here was this resistor, and I may still opt to get like a 10 ohm resistor or try something else if any of you have recommendations and would love to hear it. But so far, and the reason I keep looking at this terminal here is I don't know if you can make it out, but there are some arcing marks on the end where I was experimenting with that yesterday. But I found that using my simple Goal Zero solar panel, I'll take you out, and this certainly isn't a plug for them. Um, I am, have mixed feelings about the Goal Zero products, but using this uh, 13 watt, 13 and a half watt Nomad, uh, output voltage is about 20 run it under the house, or sorry, run it under the door, and uh, until I get a, a little bit more advanced connector, this is my setup right now. I've got negative coming off the outer end of the barrel, and then positive. You see two wires. This one's running out to nothing because the, the tinned jumpers that I have here for electrical troubleshooting. Um, were too narrow inside the barrel so I've got two of them sandwiched in to kinda keep the connection and then I've simply got my fluke leads one on the positive um, and one on the 
the negative. And then you can see here too that I've got on the positive lead connected to the one of the smaller buses that goes to the charge equalization circuit. And then my leads just tap on either side of that. So I figure I'll build a box for this thing and maybe put a, a handle so I can easily lift it in and out of the truck and get some stout leads for that. But starting yesterday with the solar panel in the evening voltage was setting at around 1, climbed up to 2, about 2.4 or so was as high as I got yesterday before the sun went down. And then I decided I'd set it up again today. Uh, I don't think this setup can be left unattended uh, because my capacitors are 2.5 volt, 2600 farad. Again, the distinction, that's not microfarad or... Um, it's full farad. Seven of those gives me in series 17 and a half volts. So if I'm trying to put in from the panel, you know, with peak sunlight 20 ish, I could potentially do damage. So if any of you all have recommendations too on uh, ways that you've better set this up. Again, I didn't want to plop it in the truck at zero volts and have the alternator go to its full capacity and then rapid discharge the, the other battery. I just frankly don't know what the consequences of that are. So that's the latest. If you have any input, please share in a respectful and adult way on the forum that uh, follows this and um, otherwise as laser hacker says I think it's a great tagline keep experimenting in a safe and responsible way um, to that note I'm gonna meet with a friend this evening a couple friends probably both power electronics guys and one was an engineer for Tesla the uh, Tesla is being built in in California so I have some pretty uh, helpful support not like the guys are coming over to the house but when i have strange questions they're certainly willing to to answer them and uh hopefully keep me from electrocuting myself which is i think the point of all of us sharing this information so further experiments will include uh using this wacky guy led and um other combinations to help make us more energy independent in the ecologically and socially responsible way. Thanks.